Good evening, everyone. Happy National Epilepsy Awareness Month. My name is Rena Lachlan, and I'm the Senior Director of Programs and Advocacy at the Epilepsy Foundation Eastern Pennsylvania. It's my pleasure to introduce you to our speaker tonight, Stacy Chalemi. Stacy is an epilepsy community member who has devoted her life to advocacy, education, and support for the epilepsy community. Stacy is also the author of the Positivity and Gratitude Journal and Epilepsy, You're Not Alone, A Personal View on How to Cope with the Disorder. I will put the links to them in chat. Tonight, Stacy's talk is about empowering yourself during your epilepsy journey. At the end of her presentation, we will have questions and answers, so please place your questions in the chat box, and I will present them to Stacy at the end. Welcome, Stacy. The floor is yours. Thank you so much, Rena. It's been a pleasure working with you, and I, I thank you for giving me this opportunity to share my story and my experience with all your members. I have been always a, a big advocate for the Epilepsy Foundation, and I myself have epilepsy. So, I, you know, it, it's a it's, it can be a roller coaster ride. But over the course of the years, everything I've gone through in life, I've learned how to empower myself. I've realized I've gotten to a point in life where we all have the power within us because coping with epilepsy can be very difficult. And it's something that it's a disorder that stays with us our whole lives. So living, living life can be an, of an obstacle. Every day is a new day and, you know, it's a struggle sometimes. And I'm here to show you today how you could overcome those obstacles. And instead of surviving, I'm going to teach you how to thrive. This way you can learn the techniques that I've learned over the course of the years to help me get to the point where I am today. Now, basically, I learned later in life how um, I came, I learned how I found my purpose in life. When, when I was five years old, I'll tell you a little about myself. And at five years old, I, um, my, my parents heard a gurgling sound in the other room. I had recently been diagnosed with a virus and an ear infection. My mother heard a sound that night in my room. She came to check on me and I was turning blue in a grand mal seizure. They had rushed me to the hospital and they found that the virus had traveled to my brain and turned into encephalitis. I was induced into a coma and they um, weren't, weren't sure what was gonna happen. They told my parents after numerous tests, they said, most likely if she comes out of this, she'll have severe brain damage or she'll have she'll be paraplegic. My parents were devastated by this. Um, my father who comes from Greece, he was by my bedside and he tells me the story where he was praying and he was he comes from a little island called Chios in Greece and there was one church and one statue next to the church and tears used to roll down the statue's eyes and he was closing his eyes and he was visualizing that statue and he was praying that I would be okay and uh, he looked up after he prayed and a teardrop on, rolled down my eyes. This was four days after being in a coma. And I opened my eyes and I said, can I have McDonald's French fries? And my father was ecstatic. And I wasn't paraplegic. I didn't have brain damage, but I did have epilepsy. And life was truly a roller coaster ride. I had my ups and downs. I had a lot of struggles. It was very frustrating. And when I got to college, especially, it became even more um, uh, more a lot harder. Uh, my seizures were not controlled. And one of the biggest goals I had at that point in my life was I wanted to get my college education. I wanted to get a diploma. And I, with the late night study and the stresses of getting good grades, my seizures were going up. And it got to the point where I didn't even know if I was going to be able to complete college. And I, so one day I just didn't know what to do. I went to the library. There was maybe like four or five books on epilepsy. They were written by doctors and medical terminology. Uh, if you weren't a doctor, it went totally over your head. And that really frustrated me. It made me really angry. I was like, you know, where can people with epilepsy get help? And I felt really alone. And so I wrote a letter to the Epilepsy Foundation. They had Back then they had a magazine and I asked them to publish my letter. And I said, how do people with epilepsy cope with this disorder? How do they get through life? 
have an epilepsy. And to my surprise, three to 400 letters from all over the United States and Canada came to my house. People shared their stories. They shared their words of wisdom. They shared their inspirations. And they told me how they cope with epilepsy. And it was at that point in my life where I realized that I wasn't alone, that there are more people just like me who have epilepsy, who feel the same way I do, who go through the same things in life that I do. And I use those those um, letters to create a regiment, and to and it was really an inspiration for me. And I got through college, and I graduated, and then I got a big corporate job in the city, and I was um, really living the life. I was, you know, having a great time. I was, you know, I had my dream job. Everything was going great. Life was grand. And then one day, I felt an aura. And I was looking around and I was in the big hallway and I was trying to find a place where no one would see me have the seizure because I didn't, you know, I didn't want anyone to know that I had epilepsy. I didn't want to be labelized. I didn't want to be, you know, I didn't want people to think I was different than them. And so nobody knew I had epilepsy. So I was trying to find a place where no one would see me. And I fell to the ground. I was conscious, but I was kind of frozen. And one of the, uh, executives just stepped over me and kept walking. And I saw him step over me and I said, oh my God, I can't believe this guy just stepped over me and he didn't even bother to stop and help me. And I, I was I was really stunned. And you know, about 30 minutes later, there was a, uh, an, uh, an associate came over to me and said, Stacy, you're doing a great job, but I'm so sorry, you just don't meet the qualifications. We're gonna have to let you go. And I knew right then and there that it wasn't because I didn't meet the qualifications. It was because I had epilepsy and these people didn't want anything to do with somebody with epilepsy. So I wasn't going to let it get me down. I said to myself, screw them. You know what? I There's something out there for me and I'm going to find out what it is. And I walked out of there with my head up high. I didn't let it get to me. And I said, one day I'm going to find my purpose in life and I'm going to succeed. So I started writing. I started doing a freelance business and I started to, um, you know, uh, work with all these different people. And then one day I started to work and an herbalist came over to me and he asked me to do a lot of research and writing on, on holistic living and learn about different herbs and vitamins and, and living healthy and getting enough of sleep and all this other stuff. So I was doing all this research and writing. And then I realized, wow, a lot of these things could maybe help me. So I started applying a more natural holistic lifestyle and incorporating that with my medications and my seizures started to decline. They went from having 12 seizures to nine to eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, to being controlled. And I realized that at that point, I needed to create a lifestyle that was suitable for me. The foods I ate, the, the detoxifying my body, looking at the ingredients, getting enough of sleep, learn how to cope with stress, all these things played a factor in my epilepsy. And using those tools that I learned, I was able to get myself under control. Now, it took a long time and it wasn't easy, but I also realized during this course of my lifetime that it's possible to go from surviving, which I was at that point where I just felt like I was surviving. I wasn't thriving. But when I got my life under control and I started to change things, started to think about uh, my life, my purpose, and I, what I did was is I wrote, at that time, it was probably like 25 years ago, I wrote a book. I took all those letters. I took the regiment that I was living and I combined it into one book and I called it Epilepsy or Not Alone. And I, I published that book back then. And then now during COVID, I rewrote it because life with epilepsy, the community, the epilepsy community changed so much. But when I first wrote it, someone had emailed me and said, Stacy, I was on the verge of suicide. I found your book in Barnes and Nobles and you saved my life. And it was at that point in my life that I realized what my purpose in life was. 
I realized that it wasn't about living an extravagant life. You know, I was a naive college girl, just, you know, coming out of college, you know, working in the city. It wasn't, you know, living, you know, living life materialistically and trying to live this, you know, facade. That wasn't who I was. I realized when I got that letter, my purpose in life was to help others. That one book that I wrote changed someone's life. It, I saved a life by giving another person encouragement. And right then and there, I realized what my purpose in life was. And I realized that I wasn't here for that. I was here to help others. And I made it my goal in life to help others who suffer from epilepsy, disabilities, conditions, and so forth. And I got there and I, and, and I started to work on myself and I started to empower myself. And one of the things when I, I talk about self-empowerment, it's so important to feel we all have the power within us to change ourselves. We could do whatever we want. I believe that we could rise up from the chaos, learn to how to acquire the courage that we need to reach our potentials in life. It doesn't matter that we have a disability. It doesn't matter that we have epilepsy. We still can become the person that we want to be in life. We have the potential to reach our goals in life. There's no reason just because we have a disability that we have to be any less than anyone else. And when I talk to people, I say, well, what is self-empowerment? Well, it's one, it's from surviving to thriving. It's becoming powerful. It involves reflecting our personal values, our skills, our goals, being prepared to adjust our behavior to achieve our goals and gaining the confidence and the strength to set realistic goals in our lives, managing ourselves, using organization and time management. Now, the first thing that happened in my life, and I, I lived in denial for a very, very long time. And a lot of people, when I worked in the epilepsy community and I do advocate work, I realized, and it's not just in the epilepsy community, it's in a lot of communities. The biggest problem we have is denial. Most people don't want to accept that they have something wrong in their life. And for me, it was very hard for me to accept that I have epilepsy. For years, I just made believe like I didn't have it. Even though I was having seizures, even though they weren't controlled, I still, in my head, I did not want to accept the fact that I had epilepsy because I did not want to be categorized and labelized. I wanted to be quote unquote normal like everybody else. I wanted to be like, you know, I just, I, I wanted to be like everybody else, you know, and I realized later that, you know what, I don't want to be like everybody else. I want to be a leader, not a follower. And one of the things when you, when you're in denial, how do we know that we're in denial? Well, we don't want to acknowledge the problem. We kind of run from it. We, you don't, you know, you don't try to face the facts of the problem. You downplay it. Oh, it's no big deal. I have a few seizures. No big deal. You know, I forgot to take my medicine. I had a seizure. I fell. It's it's not a big deal. You know, you, you don't look at it the way you should. And the worst thing about the signs of denial is that you can only make believe that you have, you're, you, you, you're, you can only make believe that you're, that the problem doesn't exist. It's always going to be there. You can you can try to convince yourself, but the problem will always persist. So you, you have to really learn how to move past the denial stage because a, eventually the problem will only get worse if we don't face the problem. And that goes for epilepsy. That goes for anything in life. If we don't accept the problem, the problem will only get worse over time. And people say, well, how do you overcome denial? Well, let's ask ourselves, why am I scared? Why am I scared to face the problem? Most of the time, people are scared to face the problem because they're afraid of change. They're afraid of failure. They're afraid that, well, if I change, what's gonna happen next? And 
you have to realize that it's okay to express your emotions. It's okay, you know, it's okay if you don't want to tell people how you're feeling, these scared emotions you might have inside. I'm a big fan of journaling. I love journaling. Um, I, I, you know, throughout my entire life, I always kept a journal. I always wrote down how I felt. I always wrote down my, you know, what was going on in my life, the good and the bad. And I was able to get those repressed emotions out and not, and not keep them built up inside because that's where the anger, the frustration, the resentment, all lies. If we don't t take care of our emotions, they're just going to build up inside us and we're going to become miserable, negative individuals. We don't want that. We want to be positive, strong individuals who move forward in life, learn how to overcome our obstacles, and we want to become our true potential in life. The goals, the dreams that you have set for yourself, you want to make your dreams a reality. And, you know, some people, you know, a group therapy works really well. When you speak with a group of people who are going through the same thing, you realize you're not the only one. And then some people's input actually might bring a light bulb that comes on and say, wow, you know, I didn't look at it like that, you know, and you help each other and you support each other. And then, you know, you become friends with those people. And then when problems occur, you can confide in those people and you know they understand because they're, they're going through what you're going through. And you could also, you know, speak to someone you trust. If you have somebody there that you're able to talk to and you trust that person, you could use that person as your rock. And these are different ways that you could, you could move past the denial. And it's, it's healthy to express your emotions by moving forward you are able to get past the denial and become a, a stronger person. Now, the, the one thing I learned is that we have to accept ourselves. For me, you know, I came to the point in my life where I realized I, after I got through my denial and I realized I have epilepsy, I realized it's not going anywhere. I'm going to be like have epilepsy the rest of my life and I'm going to have to learn how to deal with it. So I had to accept it. I accepted I, that I have epilepsy. I accepted that it's a part of me. Now let's think about it. Everybody has something. You know, you talk to some somebody on the left side of you, somebody on the right side of you, somebody might have diabetes, somebody ha might have anxiety, somebody might suffer from stress. Everybody has something in life. Nobody goes through this life without having something. So we shouldn't think of ourselves below and put ourselves on a lower level because we are good people with lots of strengths, lots of positive things about ourselves, and everybody has something. So we're no different than everybody else. We're on the same level. We're all on the same level. So I had I said to myself, Stacy, I have epilepsy. It's not going away. I learned to accept myself. And then I realized, I come to the point in my life where I said, you know what? The past is the past. I can't change the past. I can focus on the present, live in the now, and plan constructive goals for the future. And that's what I did. I lived each day, day by day, and I created in my journal short-term goals and long-term goals. And I even created a positivity and, and a positivity and gratitude journal. So, because I show people in my book how to write journals and how to make them themselves, but if they don't want to make them, I have a journal available to people if they want them. And you can create short-term goals and long-term goals. And you don't have to think like you have to accomplish these goals right away, but think about it. What would you, where would you like to see yourself in three months? Where would you like to see yourself in six months? Where would you like to see yourself a year from now? What do you want to do with your life? What has been your dream goal? Because dreams can become a reality. There's no reason why they can't. You know, in my life, I had a different journey in my head. But my, my divine, my higher power took me on a different journey because it wasn't meant to be. But we all have 
the power to become someone great. And by do but in order to do that, we have to start creating short-term goals and long-term goals for ourselves. And, and think about where we are now and where we want to be in life. And I always feel that it's very important to understand your inner spirit. I believe in everyone has intuition. Everyone, you know, there's lots of times you're walking in the street and, you, you know, you think something comes to you and says, ah, oh, I don't think you should walk down that block, you know. And sometimes we go against our intuition and like, oh, my God, I should have done that, you know. We have to under, li, we have to listen to our inner selves. We have to connect with our bodies. Our body always talks to us. And I always believe it's the heart. Our heart always speaks to us. And we have to understand that our emotions come from our heart. And then we feel a certain way. We send those messages to the brain. The brain sends it to the body. We have to understand how our body works. We have to understand the messages our body gives us. When we're too tired and we've hit our limitations, I'm sure you get certain signals that tells you I've had enough for today. Your body tells you. Or when you get aches and pains, your body had enough. It's giving you signals. And you have to listen to your body. Now for me, I, I took, you know, I, I would meditate. I love to meditate. I would take morning meditations, 15 minutes out of the day to just meditate. I would close my eyes. I would find, I have a room in my house that's very serene. And I would take my breathing and I would breathe slowly. And I would breathe in, in through the nose, out through the mouth, in through the nose, out through the mouth. And I would slow down my breathing and I would focus on the sounds around me and the quietness. And I would visualize something that made me feel serene. And then I would take all those worries and all those problems I had. And I may believe there was a dove on my shoulder. And I put all those problems on that dove and I let it fly away. And it made me relaxed and it made me calm it made me feel good because this too shall pass. As you know, when we go through things in life, any obstacle we go through, we always get through those obstacles. It may not be an easy ride, but we always get through it at the end. So it's important to really understand what you, your body needs, understand how your mind thinks, understand how your heart thinks, understand your body's signals and listen to your body. If you feel tired, you don't push yourself. You know, I hated limitations. I'll be the first one to admit it. I did not like giving myself limitations. I did not like setting such a constructive lifestyle for myself. But once I did it, that's when my seizures got better. I gave myself time management. I, I only did things up to a certain time frame because I knew that's what my body needed. I did things, I learned how to control my stress. I learned how to realize to let the little things go and just focus on the important things in life. And I trained myself to live life differently. And it was because of all these things that I incorporated in my life that I was able to move forward. Now, when you look in the mirror, I always tell people, do you like who you see? Because if you brush your teeth in the morning and you look in the bathroom mirror and you're looking at that person and you don't like who, the, who you see, then you need to do something about it. A lot of times what happens is, is that we grow to be so, we lose gratitude for what we have and we think more about what we don't have. And we start to really dislike ourselves and we're mad that we have epilepsy and we're mad that, you know, we don't have X, Y, and Z. Well, what don't you like about your life? And what can you do to change it? Because anything in life that doesn't agree with you, that doesn't make you happy, you have the ability to change it. One of the ways is setting constructive goals. Well, you don't like this. How are we going to change this? 
And these are ways that can help you move forward. Now, learn to love ourselves is so important. People don't realize, but loving yourself is, is very important. You have to accept who you are as a person. And once you've accept who you are as a person, you have to love yourself. You have to say, I am so-and-so, I have epilepsy, and I love myself. I There's people out there who love you, and that's and be have gratitude for what you have. You wake up each morning, you're able to smell the air, you're able to see the, the trees outside, you're able to be able to sit on the grass. Be appreciative for the things that make you happy in life and learn how to love yourself as a person. You are a wonderful person. You are number one. Show yourself some self-love, some self-care. You always should put yourself on a pedestal. There's no reason why you shouldn't. Putting yourself on a pedestal, giving yourself some self-love is a good thing. And you shouldn't feel guilty or unworthy of it either. Because you are worthy. You are a beautiful person. Our disorder is just a fragment of who we are. And it shouldn't stop us from enjoying life and living our dreams and accomplishing our goals. We may have to make some adjustments in our life, but it doesn't mean that life ends because you have epilepsy. Life has wonderful things in store for everyone. We just have to find ourselves, find our purpose, find you know, ignite our passion and learn to set goals and learn how to move above the crisis. Now, how to accept and love yourself? Well, one, you have to accept your condition like I was talking about. It's not going away, so accept it and move forward. You have to look at life from a positive perspective. Don't be one of those people to say, well, there's nothing good in my life because I guarantee you, you know, there are many good things in your life. We can't, from every negative thing that's happened to me in my life, I was always able to pull something positive from that negative thing. And I learned that anything that happens in my life, it's made me stronger. And I've even said to people, I said, you know what? I'm happy that I have epilepsy. And people will look at me like I'm nuts. And I would say, you know why? Because it made me a better person. I wouldn't have the love I have for others. I wouldn't have the compassion that I have for others. I wouldn't look at other people with the same pair of eyes if I didn't have epilepsy. Epilepsy made me see life through a whole different viewpoint, a whole different world. It gave me the compassion, the love, the sincerity, kindness. It showed me how to have gratitude. Because when things were taken away from me because of my epilepsy, I realized that you really have to have gratitude for the little things in life because you don't realize how valuable things in your life are until they're taken away from you. So really look at things from a positive perspective. Positivity is key. That's what got me through everything in life. And that's what will get you through life. Now, changing your outlook. This doesn't mean that you're letting your condition take control of you. Growing up, I always pretended that I didn't have epilepsy like I was telling you. And I held all of it inside like I was telling you. I, you know, I just had, I had a lot of anger, a lot of resentment. But I've learned that over the years that it's made me a stronger person. And as I got older, I started talking about it because as I told you, when I lost my job, when I had epilepsy and they saw me have the seizure, I was invited by the Epilepsy Foundation to speak in front of Congress. And I went to Washington and I spoke about job discrimination. And one of the congressmen in the front row, he he had tears coming down his eyes and he took out his handkerchief and he, he, he wiped the tears away. And later on, he came to me and he said, he thanked me and he said, my sister had epilepsy and you just brought back a lot of memories. And he commended me for being able to speak about it. And I spoke about it with pride. And I didn't let what other people thought of me get to me. 
because what people when people say things or they they act negatively it's because they either fear it or don't understand it and it was from that moment on that i kept speaking and kept becoming an advocate for epilepsy and the more i spoke about it and the more i changed people's lives the better i felt about myself the stronger i became and by doing good things and accomplishing small goals, I mean, we talked about the short-term goals and the long-term goals. Each goal I, I, I accomplished made me feel better about myself. And it brought me, it brought, it brought me to be more create, create, uh, courageous and it made me boost my self-esteem. And I also realized that you have to have patience. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. You know, I, I didn't, I, had, there was one point in my life, I, I didn't drive for 15 years until they were able to get my seizures under control. I felt imprisoned in my own home. And that's when I started to do all the writing. And that's when I started to work on the internet. And that's when I found other outlets. And then I was helping people. And during those, those years, it was tough because I felt like my independence got taken away from me. And I'm a very independent woman. So you know, it was, it was a hard battle, but I, I got through it and I learned from it and it made me a better person. And I realized also you have to believe in yourself. Like I was telling you, you know, you have to believe that you could do anything. You put your mind to it, have faith in yourself, faith, courage, wisdom, strength, and hope. These are the five components that will get you through life. Having faith, knowing wisdom, being able to think about situations and make the best choices for yourself, having hope, faith, courage, having the courage to be able to speak out, to do things, to help to do things that will make you a better person and strengthen yourself. And by doing all these things we're talking about, you will strengthen yourself and you will become a better person. And it's okay when you look in that mirror if you're not happy with the person you see because you could always change that. But in the end, you have to learn how to be proud of who you are as a person. You have to be able to be, be thankful and have gratitude that we're on this, on, this, on this planet together and that we have the opportunity to live and we are here and we can do something to help others help ourselves and feel good about ourselves. You know, when I, when they were trying to find the right drug for me, I, there was a point in my life when I was in trial groups and I saw pretty bad cases. And, and it was that point where I realized I wasn't going to pity, pity myself anymore. I, they were much more, they were much more chronic cases out there. And there were people with chronic illnesses besides epilepsy. And I realized that, you know what? I am who I am. I accept myself. I love who I am. And I'm going to make the best out of it. And how am I going to make the best out of it? I started creating goals, object objectives. I started creating a plan for myself. I started creating strategies. And I worked towards those strategies. Now, self-confidence self is a characteristic that anyone can attain, yet feeling insecure about ourselves is probably the most common thing uh, that people go through in our humanity. The majority of people in, in society think that you have to be born with confidence, and it's not true. You learn to be confident, just like you learn to cook or drive a car. Self-confidence all boils down to how you, about you, how you feel about yourself. And by working on your self-confidence, you can accomplish anything that you set your mind to. And one of the things we talked about is beginning a journal. Journals are powerful. There was sometimes I would write, I'd have one journal for my short-term and long-term goals, one journal for my emotions, and I would write in a daily diary how I felt. And then when I felt like I got through that point in my life and I felt like, all right, I've accomplished what I tried to accomplish I'm on, I'm ready for the next level. I'm ready to get to the next point in my life. I would rip those pages out of the journal and I would just shred them. And then I throw them in the garbage because that part of my life is the past. I got over it. I learned how to get over the hump 
And now I'm ready for level two. And I moved on. I didn't think about what I went through. I didn't think about the past. I gained experience. I gained strength from it, but I wasn't going to dwell on the bad things. Only the positive things I, I focused on. Only the positive things that I got out of my past, I focused on. And remember, the past is unchangeable. Once it's over, it's over. You know, you have to focus on now and you have to focus on the new beginning. Think of a butterfly. Think about a new beginnings. That's what you have to focus on. We don't focus on what we went through. We focus on today. We focus on what can be in the future. And we try to set goals to try to reach those things. And you have to learn to accept and learn how to love yourself for who you are as a person. Everybody has unique qualities. Everybody has characteristics that are special. We all have our strengths. Therefore, there's no, re there's no reason to compare yourself to other people. We all have something special or more than something special about ourselves. And these are the things we need to focus on. We need to focus on what's special, the strengths we carry, pull those out and say, how can I use those strengths? How could I use those special characteristics about myself to better myself and to help others? Because in, in my world, I always believe you have to help others. You put out in the world, you get back. And it's all about making others, helping others, and we're just working together as a team because that's how you get through in life. You have your support team. You meet people, you help people, you share the love, you share the support, and you move forward. And it makes you feel good as a person. And you have to dig deep into yourself. You have to really, lots of people don't even realize who they are as a person. I would say to people, I would say to my clients, I would say, well, who, what, what is your true purpose in life? What are your interests? What do you like to do? I said, forget about work, forget about being a mom, forget about the titles. Who are you? Who is X, Y, and Z? And they'd sit there and they'd have to think because they got so involved in other things in their lives that they didn't focus on themselves. Without those titles of mom or dad or, you know, the working person or, you know, grandma or this or that, or, you know, or auntie, you know, so-and-so, they weren't sure who they were as a person. Take some time to meditate. Take some time to feel yourself and, and write down a list of interests, things you love, things that make you happy, things that represent you and what you want. What can you do with all those beautiful things about yourself? And listen to your body and listen to your, into, to your emotions and, and use it as a guide. Let your intuition guide you. And become ready to the point where self-confidence becomes easier and easier. When you start doing these things, before you know it, when you start accomplishing little goals, when you start understanding yourself and then you feed yourself with the things you need, just like you feed yourself with food, you feed yourself with the emotional things you need in life. And you become, you start to feel good about yourself. You start to become stronger as a person. You start to become more worthy and you feel good. And your confidence gets stronger and stronger and stronger as you go. And it's all about strengthening your inner self. And we go back to the journal. You know, what you'll be able, everything, you will look back and you can make check marks on your, on, in the journal of what you've accomplished. And then once you've accomplished a, a few things, create, cross them out, give yourself a pat on the back, reward yourself. Maybe, you know, maybe do something nice. Maybe do something you enjoy. Hey, maybe buy yourself some ice cream. Do something that makes you happy. Give yourself a reward for accomplishing these goals. And then create more goals. And then keep moving forward. Keep molding yourself to become that better person, that person that you want to be, always wanted to be. And you'll see the changes. 
And confidence comes within. It's how we feel inside. And we have to focus on the positive. You can't focus on the negative things in your life. We have to overcome. And the only way to overcome is to focus on the positive things in life. We have to focus, use every negative thing, like I told you earlier, and take it as a learn experience. It's helped strengthen us. We learn from it. And, we, and those are the positive aspects. And we move on and we move on and we move on. Everybody has a story to tell. Everybody's been through things in life, but we have to not dwell. We keep moving and we keep moving and we don't let it get us stuck. And if we feel like we're starting to drag our feet or we feel depressed, that's when we go to talk to people and we ask for help. There's nothing wrong with asking for help. And, you know, we have to have a balance between, you know, giving, giving help to others, you know, don't, I always feel like, you know, it's great when people come out of the woodwork to help you, but then you have to also help them. You know, it's, it's, it's a balance, you know, as, as, as people, it's, it's always, it always feels good to help others. And it also, that, that feeling of accomplishment that you helped others also makes you a better person, a stronger person, a happier person, and a more confident person. And one of the main things, like I mentioned before, have tremendous pride in yourself. You are number one. There, Don't let anyone tell you anything different. You are number one. We have the ability to become the people we want to become. Epilepsy is not going to stop us. I didn't let it stop me. And I didn't have an easy ride. It's no reason why you can't move forward too. You are a special person. You have special qualities and you have the ability to use those qualities to better yourself, to do things that are going to make you happy and you, to help others too. And as I mentioned before, the power of positive thinking. Positive thinking is what saved my life. Always focusing on the positive, never dwelling on the negative, never focusing on the past. I use them as a learning experience. And if I found myself falling back into it, because we all tend to fall back sometimes, I got myself back out of it started to meditate, started to do things that were healthy for me, started to talk to people, started to ask for help. You got to take the initiative. You got to focus on who you can be, who you want to be, what your passion is, what your dreams are. Having seizures could be very depressing sometimes. It could be frustrating. It could be, you know, but we can't let it stop us. Every, we can't, people, you know, suffer from many different illnesses and conditions. We cannot let it stop us. Be positive, focus on positivity. And if you have negative energy, negative people around you, maybe it's time to start clean, cleansing out the, the pantry. There was a time in my life where I had people, they were wonderful people, but they were always so negative. Every time I was around them, I felt like a vacuum was getting sucked out of me. My energy level just got sucked right out of me. And I realized that as much as I like certain people, they weren't beneficial in my life. So I had to do a cleansing and really focus on the positive people in my life, people that were going to bring me up and people that were going to give me the hope and the support I needed to move forward in life. So I stopped, you know, we, we you might have some family members that might be a little negative and not have such nice things to say. So, you know, you don't nix them. You just keep a little bit of a distance. And remember, it's not you with the problem. If people say bad things or negative things to you, they're the ones with the issues, not you. You are a wonderful person with wonderful qualities and you are just as good as anybody around you.
Now, this is one of my favorite quotes. It's the positive thinker sees the invisible, feels the intangible, and achieves the impossible. And that was from Winston Churchill. And like I mentioned before, gratitude is very important. We have to have gratitude in our life. Sometimes we don't realize how important things are in our lives until they're taken away from us and then it's too late. Be gracious in what you have in life. And maybe if there are people in your life that you have in your life, sometimes, you know, when we get, we go through tough things, we can tend to be pick on people. We don't mean to, but we're going through a lot of stress and a lot of emotions. Maybe write a letter to them and tell them why they mean so much to you. Show them why you have gratitude for them. Things like this go a long way and it makes you feel good as a person too. Research has shown even that people who incorporate daily attitude of gratitude into their lives, improve their lives significantly, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. There was a recent study done by psychologists that showed people who incorporated gratitude in their lives obtained better health, sounder sleep, less anxiety, and depression. They had higher long-term satisfaction with their life. They were kinder towards others, including their partners. It shows you that when you can have gratitude into your life and be and look at life from a more positive perspective, you start to be different. You start to act differently. You start to see life differently. Therefore, you start to change the way you feel, the way you think, the way you do things, the way you treat people. And that all makes you feel better as a person, makes you strengthen as a person. It makes you a better person overall. And it gives you the ability to move forward and achieve. And whatever you achieve in life, you have gratitude. Now we went over about denial, accepting yourself, loving yourself, understanding yourself, improving your self-esteem and positive and gratitude. These are components in your life that are very important in order to cope with epilepsy and to move forward in life and live a happy, healthy and productive life. Let's stop surviving and start thriving. We all deserve to rise above the chaos, gain the courage to, to accomplish our dreams and to move forward in life and reach our potentials, whatever those potentials are. Now, I don't want you to just listen to this. I want you to execute what you've just learned. I want you to start writing in a journal. I want you to start writing and setting goals for yourself. Start thinking about who you are as a person. What beauties do you have inside you? What interests do you like? What makes you happy? And then figure out ways to focus on those things. Start focusing on the positive things in life and practice not letting the negative things get to you so much. And let's take that past and put it behind us, use it as a learning experience and just move forward and live in the now and focus on the future and focus how we can together as a team be the best people we can be. I want you to start today and realize it's baby steps. I didn't get to this point in life overnight. It took time, but I was determined to be that better person. I was determined to succeed. I was determined not to let epilepsy knock me down. And every time it did knock me down, I got back up and I said, you're not gonna win. I'm gonna be the winner. And I kept moving forward and moving forward and moving forward and I didn't let it get to me. And today I am a new empowered woman a person who feels good about herself, a person who strives to be the best I can be. And I don't let my condition get the best of me. I refuse and don't let it get the best of you. Remember, you are special. You are number one and you can achieve all the dreams that you have set in your mind. Your dreams can be your reality. 
take today as a new day to start the rest of your new beginnings, your new life. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stacy. That was really inspiring. And thank you so much for sharing your story with everybody. We do have some questions. I will read them to you. And we have some comments that I thought um, would be great for you to comment on. Okay. So someone wrote, a friend of mine says, everyone's fighting some hard battle. And I think that's a really special quote. And you, you kind of mentioned that in your um, in your talk. Mm-hmm. Um, another person said that they have a sister that has seizures at night. Um, do you have any advice on how um, she should deal with it? Well, it, for the longest time when I was young, I had seizures in my sleep. I didn't even know I was having sleep sleep, sleep seizures. And then when I got married, my husband was like, did you realize you had a seizure last night? And I was like, no. And so when I found out, I had spoken to my epileptologist and my epileptologist told me, um, we took care of it. We were working on um, trying to create different, you know, his goal was to, to, to find the correct drugs, the correct blend um, to help me stop my seizures or at least get them controlled. But at least she's having them in her sleep in a safe bed. So that's a plus, you know, you're not, you're not having them you know, when you're walking or you're in an area, but you definitely need to let your doctor know. And you definitely, you know, also, you know, look at your life and, you know, also see, are you getting enough of sleep? Are you staying up too late? You know, what's your stress level? And I I always believe to look at what you're eating. Cause I realized also a lot of times I would get seizures when I was eating a lot of food with sodium and the, the, my sodium level would get high. The retention, water retention would be high. People don't realize it, but when you have water retention, the water retention also puts pressure on the brain, which I'm not, could be a trigger for some, not all, but it, so it's always be, it's always good to be precautious. So it's better to protect or prevent, you know, pre- help us prevent than to do something that, so I say always look at the ingredients and whatever you put in your body, you know, you think twice because, you know, your body, um, all the foods you put in our body play a big role in how we feel and how our body reacts. And when the one thing, when our body is under stress, it could have a seizure. So these are some things to do. Thanks, Stacey. Um, someone else wrote that they stress a lot. And they're saying, how can I overcome stress? I've tried meditating. Am I doing something wrong? No, you're not doing anything wrong. I suffered for years with stress. I let a lot of the, everything bother me. And I realized that, you know, it wasn't worth it. Is my, is my life more important? You know, if I, if I, if I kept letting things get to me, I was, my seizures were never going to get better. I, I realized that I needed to learn how to control my stress so what I started doing was, is that I started tuning out the the little things in life. If it wasn't a big problem, I didn't focus on it. I didn't, I didn't think about it. I had to learn how to get it out of my head, you know, and not let it circle in my head. Cause sometimes what, as, as humans, we tend to keep thinking about it over and over and over again. And then we start to analyze it. And that was one of my big problems. I analyzed the situation and then I made it worse. So what I do is I don't let little things um, bother me unless it becomes a problem. If it's a problem, then I, I look at it. I take a deep breath. I take a, I stand back and I say, okay, let's, let's, let's focus on this. This is the problem. You know, let's look at our options. What's the best solution. And, you know, and then think about the best way to handle it, because you know what, if you get all stressed out, you can't focus. If you can't focus, then you don't have clarity and you're not going to be able to make the best choices. So you have to realize that it's not worth it. It's not worth it to get yourself stressed because no matter what problems we go through in life, we will get through them. We will overcome. So it's better just to take it with stride. It's easier said than done, but with practice, I learned how to just slow my breathing down, even, you know, and just, just take a step back. And is it really worth you know, getting myself worked over. I refuse to let other people, what they say or a situation get me to the point where I would have a seizure. And there's so many different coping mechanisms you can use also. Thank you, Stacey. Um, Another person said that 
um, they have someone that judges them because of their conditions. What do, what should this person do when someone makes fun of her? Well, one, I, I would definitely let that person know how I feel. And sometimes people like confliction. I've noticed in my life that there are people out there. One, they, they look at you and they look, they think you're below them. They think they're better than you. You're an easy target for them, you know? So they will, they will, you know, they will keep giving you that nudge until you actually speak up for yourself. And, you know, you if you think it's too much stress to speak up for yourself, then I would say distance yourself from that person because it's not worth it. It's not worth getting yourself upset. Like I said earlier, it's when these people say things, it's not, it's not you with the problem. It's them, you know, they're, it, they have the issues and that, you know, because it's not normal to labelize someone and to say cruel things to another person and to want to hurt somebody. So obviously this person was hurt in their life somehow, some way, and they're taking their frustrations out on you and they consider you an easy target. So one, you could either approach them if it's not going to be upsetting to you, or two, you could just distance yourself completely from that person. Awesome. Thank you, Stacy. I don't see any more questions in chat. Some people have been thanking you. <laughs> um, any other questions? We have a few more minutes if you'd like to ask a question. Any more questions? Well, thank you again, Stacey, so much for the talk. Um, we really appreciate it. Thank you, everyone, for joining tonight. I hope everyone has a wonderful month. Happy National Epilepsy Awareness Month. Hope you all will, you know, think about our talk tonight and empower yourself. You guys are all amazing epilepsy warriors, and we're so grateful that you're in our community. Yes. Um, and thank you. Thank you again so much, Stacey. That was wonderful. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you guys for just letting me come here today and be a part of this. I'm so glad that I could, you know, talk to others and I hope I touched other people's hearts and, you know, and just leave them, you know, the holidays are coming, don't get stressed, you know, and just enjoy yourself, enjoy your life. And remember, you are so worth it. You are, you are special. You are wonderful people. And there's no reason to make other people think, any, you know, don't, you, don't compare yourself to others because, you know, uh, it, it's all about how you feel as a person, not what others think. You know, we don't, we shouldn't care what others think. It's about what you think that matters. Exactly. So wise. Thank you, Stacey. You're welcome. Bye, everybody take care.